process that maybe one of us have. But honestly, uh, I'm very humbled that everybody took time out to come and join us today. So just a small blueprint of how we're going to continue for the next few minutes. Um, I will present on Ramadan, just the basic uh, topic that we have today, for maybe about 10 minutes or so, or 15 minutes. And then what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and uh, our prayer kicks in, which is a sunset prayer. So as Muslims, we pray five times a day. The number four prayer, which is the next prayer, will kick in in about 15 minutes. So I'm going to ask everybody, uh, the, the males and the females, brothers and sisters, we're going to go over to the Islamic Center, and I wanted to really uh, show you folks how Muslims pray. So if any of you are familiar with the Bible, when you palm through the Bible, we pray no differently than the way Jesus, peace be upon him, prayed, how Moses prayed, how Abraham prayed. And that's mentioned in the Bible, how they fell on their face and they prostrated, meaning they didn't just like slip and fall. Uh, falling on your face means prostration. You prostrate to the Most High, which is the Creator. So I wanted everybody to kind of have a small taste of that. But uh, we respect for those that don't want to go, no problem. We have some tables set up outside uh, for our guests. So if for some reason you're not comfortable in going inside, we totally understand. But we can have some volunteers escort you that way. But I would really encourage everybody, if you can check this off your bucket list then, right, to actually see how Muslims pray. So we would invite everybody to come inside, sit down with us, and, uh, and see kind of like how we pray. Once the prayer is concluded, we're going to go outside for the main... Uh, uh, topic or main thing we're going to do is dinner, breaking fast. Just as a disclaimer, folks, um, a lot of, uh, many of us, we've been fasting about 16 hours, so it's like lions coming out of their den. For the <laughs> so if somebody by, by fault trips over or bumps you, I ask you for forgiveness. Please forgive us. People, when they don't have some food, some tea in the system, they kind of get out of whack, right? Yeah. So I ask you on behalf of the community, please forgive us for our many shortcomings that we have. Uh, what is Ramadan? Ramadan is basically the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. So as Muslims, we go by the Islamic calendar, which is based on the moon, the lunar calendar. So being that we live here in the West, we also go by the Western or the solar or Gregorian calendar, but we do have an Islamic calendar. The ninth month of this calendar is called Ramadan. Ramadan is basically a month in which Muslims from all over the world, uh, 1.2 to 1.6 billion Muslims all over the world, they fast. Fast meaning you abstain, you stay away from food, from drink, and from a relation with your spouse during the daylight hours. So this is my, I like to elaborate this a little bit, because when I tell people Ramadan is for a whole month and you're fasting, they say, okay, thank you, Jamal. We will see you later. Gotta go. <laughs> right? It is, it's not continuous for a whole month. It's just during the daylight hours of each day. So at night times where we charge our batteries by uh, eating food, by charging our batteries, right? And as you can see, uh, because the fans don't work, I'm gonna have to just, uh, you know, so wipe down a little bit. Um, so that is just during the daylight hours, right? For one month. Uh, so from dawn till sunset, this is what we uh, fast. So here in Southern California, in the Los Angeles area, you're looking at about approximately 16 hours of fasting. No food, no drinks, of meaning no water, no Coke, no tea, even though I'm salivating right now, right? Uh, these are things that we are not able to do until sunset, right? Now, uh, we also have to understand uh, that uh, it's not just fasting of uh, food and drink, right? It's fasting of my eyes for making sure I don't look at things I shouldn't be looking at, right? It's the fasting of my tongue that I shouldn't be cursing somebody. I shouldn't be uh, falsifying information. I shouldn't be slandering or backbiting anybody, right? So it's the fasting of my tongue too. Fasting of my ears, why? I shouldn't be hearing things that I shouldn't be hearing. I shouldn't be part of conversations that are speaking negative or ill about somebody else, right? So it's the fasting of the whole body. And sometimes we just kind of focus on the food and drink, but it's actually the fasting of the whole body, just to make sure we understand that process. Now, uh, there are some conditions for somebody to be able to fast, right? There are some, uh, basically three primary conditions. The first thing is if for Ramadan, for somebody who's fasting, it has to be um, somebody who is a Muslim, right? So it's, it's incumbent upon every Muslim to fast. So if you're not Muslim, you don't have to fast, so nobody's gonna go up to you. Oh, you're not fasting today, I have my like notebook saying, hey, did you fast? Because it's not obliged upon you, right? But one suggestion I would give, uh, I would suggest everybody, if you are within your capabilities and uh, your physical ability, if you're able to fast, fast. Why? Because it's a beautiful thing. And unless you fast, you won't understand how it is to actually fast. Why? It humbles you, which I'm gonna get some of the benefits, right? And, and this is no different from the biblical teachings. So. The Ramadan, right, it, or the aspect of fasting, it's, uh, it's, it's no different from what God Almighty says, right? God Almighty says in the Quran, 
right? The Quran being the final revelation that God sent to mankind. So it's the final instruction guide or revelation. You know, when we talk about the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Psalms of David, the speech of Abraham. As a Muslim, we believe in all those scriptures. But we believe in the final scripture because the previous scriptures, people started to change. So we believe in the final instruction guide, which is the Quran. When you pause through the Quran, it is no different from the fundamentals of the Bible, the Old and the New Testament, which is to uphold the first commandment, right? Uh, which is, thou shalt not worship anything other than your Lord. But it's a beautiful thing uh, that God mentions in the Quran. He says that, uh, to the rough translation, that fasting is prescribed on you as it was prescribed to those before you. Fasting is incumbent upon you like it was incumbent upon those that came before you. What does that mean? Very simple. That there are individuals, there are nations that used to also fast before. It's not something new that Muslims invented and we just kind of go with it. No, no. It's actually the continuation of the message. And when you when you look at Moses in Arabic, we say Musa. Moses, may God's peace be upon him. His nation, the individuals used to fast. When you look at Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, the son of Mary, he fasted for how many days? 40 days. And within his nation, they used to also fast. And so when you pump through the Bible, you find many individuals that took part in fasting. Now, some of the minute details might be different. Like, for example, in the Quran, it mentions Mary, mother of Jesus. And it mentions uh, other individuals that used to fast. One of the aspects of their fasting was they couldn't even speak. So it was fasting, but if somebody was to talk to them, part of that fast was to say, you know what, I'm fasting. Or with hand gestures, just kind of say, you know what, uh, I can't speak right now. Imagine we had to do that today. That would be very difficult for us. So we're very fortunate. We're very humble, right? Second aspect, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is based on the moon, right? It's uh, the, the lunar calendar. And this, again, is a mercy from God. Why? Because as I mentioned, we're fasting for about how many hours? Did anybody remember? 16, 16. Roughly 16 hours. And it depends where you are in the world, right? Uh, but here in Southern California, we're about 16 hours, plus or minus, right? And it's in the summertime right now. But there are times, because we base it on the lunar calendar, that it's going to be in a different season. So imagine if we have to fast every Ramadan for 16 or 17 or 18 hours. How difficult would that be? Right? So God's mercy sometimes, as it fluctuates, just a few years ago, it was in the wintertime. So we were finishing fast maybe at 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. Now what's the benefit of that? But sometimes that's when people wake up. So for them, for them, uh, it's, uh, they won't really know uh, what a fast is because they maybe slept through the whole thing, right? So God gives you this balance. And when you look at the atmosphere, when you look at the world, you see balance, right? And this is the balance that Ramadan brings us with, right? So um, the three conditions that I mentioned, just coming quickly back to it, the first one is if somebody is a Muslim, right? Again, if you're not a Muslim, it's not incumbent upon you to fast, but it is very much encouraged for somebody to just try it, right? Uh, but it's not forced, obviously, right? Number two, it has to be that the individual is sane. He's in his senses. So if there's some uh, mental disabilities or something that deters him from actually fasting, then he's excused because God will not put upon you something that you cannot do, right? That wouldn't be just, right? Number three is that the individual has hit puberty. So puberty is the mark where the individual is accountable for the actions. And in our faith, it might differ from other faiths, that uh, the accountability of sin starts at puberty, not at birth. So in Islam, there's no concept of like an original sin. Some of you might be familiar with it. In Islam, actually, accountability starts the moment one hits puberty. So Ramadan, meaning the aspect of fasting, is incumbent upon somebody once they hit puberty, right? Those are the three basic uh, means. But there are also some other exceptions. So for example, um, if somebody's traveling, right, at a distance, they're not forced to fast because it might be difficult on them, right? If somebody's pregnant, if a female's pregnant, right, she's not forced to fast. If, if she's going through her menstrual cycle, Again, being it's very difficult, right? Ladies, no, uh, you're not uh, incumbent to fast. You just make those up later on. So you have the whole lunar calendar before the next Ramadan to make it up. This is the mercy of Almighty God that He, uh, he sends uh, regarding that uh, situation, right? Um, also, um, see that fat, the aspect of fasting is very beautiful. Why? Because it's something hidden. I mean, if I didn't tell you folks, you, would you know that I'm fasting? You wouldn't know, no. right? And that is the whole aspect of fasting. Like, even if I was fasting, right, and say somebody came up to me and offered me some food, so Miss Pat, right, maybe you came up to me, you gave me a cold Dr. Pepper to drink, right, <laughs> which I would love right now, right? I would say thank you, and I would just keep it with me. 
but it doesn't mean I have to break my fast. You wouldn't know, right? I'll just keep it for later on and I'll break my fast with it. So you'll get the reward as well, right? So fasting is a beautiful thing versus some other actions or ritualistic actions. Praying, a physical prayer. You, you can probably tell when somebody's praying a physical prayer, right? Uh, giving charity, sometimes at fundraising, somebody might raise their hand to give charity. Somebody might give it to an, on behalf of an organization. Somebody on the other hand sees that, right? But fasting is so beautiful because it's between you and your creator, right? That's why when it's between you and your creator, the reward is even uh, multiplied even more. How much so that God Almighty says that the reward for somebody to fast for his sake, the reward is with him. He doesn't give you, like, you know, sometimes he might say, if you do this, you get this. If you do this, you get this. But as it relates to fasting, he doesn't give a specific reward. He doesn't give a specific, uh, uh, because it's something that uh, it's up to him. And we ask him to bless us with the best, which we know because he's the most just, right? And that's a beautiful concept. Concept, As it relates to fasting as well, some of uh, the benefits one will get out of fasting as uh, my time is getting a little shorter, uh, you know, um, one of the things that's very beautiful is that, you know, when your stomach is growling and when your throat is parched, when you're thirsty, when it's dry, because of fasting, next time you will understand how it is for somebody who doesn't have any food. Someone who doesn't have any drink. Why? Because you went through the same thing for one month. So the next time you hear somebody that has a uh, sign that says, I'm hungry, please feed me, or um, can you assist me? You're more inclined to giving to them. Why? Because you put yourself in that position. You say, you know what? Let me grab you something to eat. I'll come back and I'll give it to you. Why? Because I put myself in that same position. See, if it's from God, we believe, he's most just and he's, he's all knowledgeable. He knows better than we know ourselves because he created us. So if he's saying to do certain actions, we should do our best to do those actions because he created us, right? Just like you get a phone, right? You, you say you have like a Samsung phone, right? Would it make sense for you to have a Samsung phone along with Sony instructions? Would it be compatible? No. Yeah. Why? It's not the same maker. It's not the same maker, right? So you need Samsung with Samsung, Sony with Sony. So the creator, he created his creation. Thus we follow the creator and whatever he said to the best of our ability by putting our best foot forward and trying, right? Another uh, great uh, benefit of Ramadan is this, that, you know, for uh, one month when you're uh, fasting, um, you, you're, you're able to stay away from food and drink, right? So, for example, for one month, food and drink, it's something that God says during the daylight hours, again, right? I was trying to elaborate. It's not continuous. During the daylight hours, you stay away from food and drink and relations with your spouse, right? Even though it's permissible for me, right? I can drink some tea, some coffee. Uh, I can eat food, right? But just God Almighty says during the daytime hours, stay away from it, right? What that is doing is God is training you and training I, train those that are fasting, observing fast, for the remainder 11 months, it will be easier for you to stay away from things that are already not permissible for you. So it's training for you, right? So for one month, I stay away from food and drink, though it's permissible for me. What that is doing is training me for the remainder 11 months that I stay away from things that are forbidden for me. Alcohol, gambling, whore, adultery, whatever, uh, different different regulations that God has said, right? So it becomes easier for me to stay away from those things. And that is a, it's a benefit for us, right? And uh, having said that, there's so many other benefits one can talk about, the scientific benefits, the medical benefits, right? And we just don't have the, the time for it because our fast is breaking in a few minutes. But I want to just shed lights on Ramadan and I wanted to kind of open up the floor for any Q&A, some questions and answers because I know sometimes we don't have that many interactions, but I just wanted to let the community here know that the mosque is open every day. I don't want you to feel like you will have to wait once a year to come or like open house day. No, no. As I mentioned many times, the mosque is open to everybody every day. Every day the mosque is open from about 1 p.m. to about 10 p.m. So you're most welcome to come anytime. If you want to call and make an appointment, no problem. If you want to walk in, no problem. But you know what? I firmly believe in folks, uh, we have to open up the lines of communication. And when we don't open up these lines of communication, how are we gonna get to know one another, right? How are we gonna get to know one another? So I, I humbly and I'm so happy that some people from the community took time out and to come and visit us today. So Because we're opening up those lines and uh, of, of communication, right? So at this time, what I wanted to do is because we open fast at about 8, 10, I think we have time for maybe one or two questions. So did any of our guests here have any questions regarding Ramadan? Yes. I had a question about the, um, the time when a, when a when young person becomes responsible, you said it becomes puberty. Yeah, when they, when they, they hit begin uh, fasting. Right. Is puberty 13? Yeah, okay, so now puberty is, uh, in every culture it, it, it differs, right? Because in some cultures, um, somebody can have a wet dream when they're 11, 
the basic signifying they're becoming an adult. A, a, a female, a woman can have her period at nine years of age. This is happening. This is documented information in medical journals at 10 years of age. So basically, uh, it's those things that distinguish when uh, a female has her first period, right? That's going to affect her when she's uh, hitting puberty. Mm -hmm. And for a male or for a boy, it's going to be when they have their first wet period. That kind of distinguishes uh, puberty. Yeah. So I was asking because the uh, in the Jewish religion it's thirteen. So at, at oh, it's so, a set age. Yeah, and uh -huh. that's when they have their bar mitzvahs. So that's sure, sure. So I okay. thought it might be the same. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so I I can't make a blanket statement because it was going to be different for everybody right. in different cultures, right? Uh, so somebody is very mature at eleven, versus somebody that's still fifty years old and still not mature, right? So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so we try our best. So that's a very good question. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, any other questions? Please feel free to ask if you have any questions regarding Ramadan or about Islam, or and I'll do my best. Yes. I I have a for your question for 16 hours of fasting here. I have my family lives in Sweden for 20 hours. Yeah, I'm born in Sweden. Yeah. 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 That's that's a small world. I didn't even know. So I'm actually born in Sweden, right? In Sweden, because it's so close to the North Pole, they fast about 20 to 21 hours. Yeah, because yeah. as the sun goes down, yeah, as the sun goes down, it goes right back up. So in Scandinavia, Norway, Sweden, Finland, right in that area. 20 hours. Yeah. yeah. So we're very fortunate here. Very fortunate, right? Uh, so uh, that's a very good point, though. Thank you so much. Uh, so that's why I said that it depends on where you are in the world. Uh, the time is going to be a, a little bit different. Right? Any other questions, comments, concerns? Is it time for me to ask questions? Thank you for um, humbling us to understand what somebody who is suffering is going through. Because I, I identify with that when you talk about you know, being hungry to understand what another man or woman in the world is going through when they too are suffering. I know. I oh, thank you so much. And, and just to elaborate, like, uh, uh, one understands what somebody is going through, but at the same time, it's a blessing. So we look at it in a positive way, not a negative way that I have to wake up, oh, I have to fast. No, it's beautiful. Why? Because you get to give your body a break. So for example, you know, when you get tired, you go to sleep, right? When you're hungry, you eat. But see, the stomach also needs a rest. Your digestive system, think about it. Every day, every day of the year, it breaks down food. Two times a day, three times a day, four times a day. Don't you think that it also needs a break? Mm -hmm. Right? So, so that, that's what we don't have time, but medically and scientifically, there's so many benefits of somebody fasting. Even physicians, certain remedies, they say, you know, it's best to fast. If you can fast, it will help you in a certain situation, right? But we knew this over like 1,400 years ago, so that's why we try to practice it. Yes. You know, I would suggest that you come to a city council meeting, because you, you speak wonderfully. And I think that because it's televised, the Hawthorne should really know what the Muslims are about so they could take it other places. Because, I mean, I, I'm all over the place, so is Olivia. So, you know, we hear of all kinds of religions, and I've never, you know, I know about the Muslims. I know, you know, that it's a godly, you know, person, but uh, a lot of people don't. And I think it would be very good if you came and spoke, please. Sure. Thank you so much. And, uh, and, uh, on behalf of the Islamic Center, we actually do attend many meetings and different oh, yes, with Brother Abdullah. And you're right, and we should we should be doing more, no doubt about it. But uh, also, like one thing we've tried is we've tried to reach out to other churches and other organizations. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't hear anything back on their end. That we wanted to go in because sometimes people are not going to come here. We do have to go to them and just kind of say, "Hey, how can we open up lines of communication?" We've tried, uh, and uh, and unfortunately, sometimes not everybody. Sometimes they just don't open up the doors, which is fine. We, we totally understand everybody's policy, but you're right. And uh, if we can uh, do more advocacy on our part, that'll be very good. And I appreciate that. Thank you so much. So I think at this time, because the fast is opening in about a few minutes, what we can do is our uh, volunteers. If our volunteers can just stand up. Our volunteers are gonna escort our guests inside the prayer hall. But uh, again, I encourage everybody to come to the uh, prayer hall uh, and to see how Muslims pray. Again, don't worry, you won't be taken hostage. Everything will be okay. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, encourage every, I encourage everybody to come. That's a good one. And this is a good one. Do you break fast here?